It's Vlog Day 568, and you get a load of this. Morning. It's Sunday, and it's almost noon. I slept until 11. I just I stayed up really late last night finishing James Smythe's Explorer. It was good. A little bit too on the nose for the existential loneliness factor, but good. Very good. So yeah, I finished that at like 2 in the morning or something and then just went to bed, and it was good. Sleeping is nice. Now, I'm gonna go for a run because in a couple of hours I'm supposed to help Pushan move all of his stuff into his new photography studio which will also be good. Uh, but if I don't go for a run now, I'm afraid I won't. And then we have a walk along Canal Saint Martin for the live stream. And we'll see what the heck comes out of all of that. Just a quick insert. Today is my first Mercy Ships Monday. I forgot about that because I haven't done one before. And today I'm gonna tell a story about how I kind of like found Mercy Ships and got into it. And probably how I sold everything to move to Africa because that was a thing. Anyways, back to what we were just talking about. Oh right, we do have, we announced on, I guess it's on St. Patrick's Day is gonna be our meetup. The 17th. So the February meetup will be on the 17th. It's going to be at the Pershoir. I will put up the graphic that Cheryl created for it and you can check that out there. We're going to be there with uh, Andrea, Cheryl, myself, and I think Zoe is going to be there too for those of you who are fans of Zoe Ariel. So if you want to come out, drink green beer, they probably won't have green beer, but you will wear green. Do I have anything that's green? I have like one green shirt and then we'll hang out and it'll be great. So for those of you who've been asking when the next meetup is, it's on the 17th. And for those of you who are like, Jay, didn't you say you're going to go for a run? Yes. Yes, I am. Four miles at like an 8.40 pace, which is great. <coughs> a little coffee though afterwards. Speaking of coffee, time to go co get back, time to go get coffee from Pushan. So for those of you who don't know, that one of the other things yesterday was a hard video to make because it's about a subject that I tend to avoid for a lot of reasons. Today's video is sort of as well because one of the things I, I really try hard not to talk about politics or religion <laughs> or sports on uh, my vlog. There, you know, just try to try to keep it safe. But there's no way of getting around the religion topic a little bit uh, when talking about Mercy Ships because Mercy Ships is an NGO that is based around Christian values, just based on Christian values. Depending on who you ask, some of them would call it a Christian organization, others would not. A lot of that depends on the marketing materials. It's like what country you're in and who's saying what. But the reality is it is a solid mix of both. And so I just need to talk about that a little bit before I talk about how I wound up there and yeah, why I decided to do it. The reason that I don't want to get into religion is should be pretty obvious, but generally any faith-based whatever is I... I don't really want to talk about what I believe, what I don't believe, where I'm at in life so much because it, it, there's no real way to unpack it in a way that doesn't end up alienating people purely by misunderstanding. So I just try to leave it out. But I can't totally leave it out when I'm talking about Mercy Ships because it is a faith-based organization. Or at least it's a faith-based. The international organization is not technically, I don't think, but it's based on Christian values, whatever that means for you. There are a lot of people who are not Christians that serve on board. Um, and one of the nice things about it that I really, really appreciate about it is that it's not a proselytizing organization, which means that they're not going out and they're not preaching at people. They're just trying to serve people, which is really important. It's a very important distinction because when you're offering a service, especially like surgery, I'll tell you more about some mercy ships here in a second. But when you're offering a service like surgery, the last thing you want to do is to tell people in order to receive surgery, they have to believe what you believe. They have to convert. They have to do something specific like that. That's messed up. And thankfully, Mercy Ships does not do that. And they'll actually send people home who cross that line. So it's a really, really important distinction that I think is, is, is very valuable. And there have been a lot of changes, a lot of thought processes, and I'm on a journey of my own. And I think that's about all that we need to talk about today. There may become a day where maybe I can share that story in detail, but today's not going to be that day. So ground rules. We're not talking about religion today or ever. We're not talking, I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything. This is just a portion of my life uh, that is a really cool portion of my life, actually, one that I'm very proud of, one that I talk about a lot with people in general, uh, but just so that's out there for you to know. I think it's important because I want us all to be cool and on the same page. Speaking of cool and on the same page, I gotta eat something before I go help Pushan move or I might pass out. So let's go. He offered me coffee too. Let's go get coffee. Uh, 
I don't think that guy washed his hands after coming out of the bathroom before manhandling all of my fruit. Thankfully, I will just wash it at Prushan's. The moving is making progress. I've got nothing to say. Sean is calling our Uber driver. The whole plan is to basically move with Uber today. Uber van. They don't have Uber XL, but they do have Uber vans. We were trying to find an XL. And then there were no vans available, so instead he ended up getting an Uber Access, which is like a handicap accessible. Ran, you know, it comes, it's a van with a ramp, I'm assuming. So it seemed only fair to actually call them in advance and be like, hey, this is what we're actually doing, just so you know, uh, so they can say no if they want to. Looks like, looks like we're gonna be good. He's in the process of negotiating. So we'll take everything to his studio, unload it, probably go to KB Coffee really quick, grab a cookie, because all I've had to eat today was most of an apple, half of those berries, and a banana. Fruit's really good, but uh, gonna be really hungry soon, and a cookie just sounds amazing. Those cookies, I, all I can think about is cookies right now. Cookies are hard to find in Paris. Now that I've found a couple of good ones, they're like literally all I want. Also, hopefully the wind's not too bad, but for the live stream, I brought my little fuzzy cat, Mike. Hold on, check this out. Now the only problem is that I gotta keep it pointed at me somehow. Anyways, hopefully that helped a little bit. Good? No. No? Dang it. So the, the guy said he has like a regular car, so. Oh, he just has a regular car? Yeah. That's not gonna fit, so he's like, yeah, you gotta call his van. Huh? Dang it. Where are all the vans? You know that you want it so badly. It was a 23 before, and I was at 40 euros. The other ones are all 20. Should we take two Ubers? We could. No, that would be the same thing. Yeah, it's fair. I'm requesting it, it's 12 minutes. <laughs> the best part. This guy's great. Bouchon's sharing this space with a bunch of really cool people, it sounds like. There's a guy upstairs who does like 3D VR rendering stuff, I guess. And then there's a sound booth over here. Underground Wonders. And moved. How do you feel? Feels great, man. It's time to start working now. Yeah. All the fun is over. Now it's time to put it together. I'm looking forward to decorating this space. Oh, it'll be cool. It's looking really good. We'll be back. He's gonna, I'm gonna be his test subject for shooting this in. This is my favorite part. Yeah. Set. There are no cookies, but it looks amazing. Although, I've been wanting to try their brownies, so I might have to do that. Right. 
They didn't have any cookies. I was saying that I'm obsessed with cookies right now just because they're so hard to find in Paris. These guys make good cookies. Neighbors makes really good cookies. There's another spot I need to find, so I will explore that. But the downside is no cookies today. So I tried the brownie, which is very tasty. It's not what I'm looking for from a brownie, though. It's the only thing. <laughs> it's very good. I'm gonna eat the whole thing. I'm gonna enjoy it. If it doesn't hit that like I gotta go back there for brownies, Mark. Gotta find that still. How does it pass? I approve. Mm -hmm. Goes well with coffee. Oh, the sugar would kick in. Here we go. We just gotta find Oliver, and then we're good to go. We'll get started here. The canal side of the statue means it should be over here. Good. How are you? Good this is Sean. Nice to meet you, Oliver. Oliver and I finished. There were there were the the Survivors Club here on the live stream. How did you like it? Oh man, that was. It feels like I just run a hundred meter sprint. <laughs> yeah. It feels. Oh, it's so thrilling. <laughs> it's so so thrilling. Yeah. It was good. It was really fun. Thank you guys for tuning in. For those of you who tuned in and uh, were able to join us, it was good. And it was unfortunately we lost Pushan about halfway through. One of the crocodiles got him. Uh, but aside from that, that's why I brought these guys along was just as crocodile buffer, crocodile bait. But yeah, it was good. If you don't know what I'm talking about, the crocodile side, I will link to his podcast again below, and then you can check out his crocodile episode of his podcast on the canal, which we just walked along the whole way. So, doo -doo -doo. I gotta find some food. I'm not, I've, I say that too much on my vlog though. I'm not hungry, I'm perfectly fine. <laughs> so Ben here was actually just commenting on the live stream that this is his neighborhood and he's walking back on his way home and cross paths with us, so. There you go. Yeah, yeah. dude, good to, good to meet you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, let's meet up soon though. <laughs> oh, that was a terrible. So basically, right after college, I went and taught English in Nice, and I really wanted to get back overseas. There weren't a whole lot of opportunities for me to do that, especially not from Spokane, and it became very difficult, and I started to feel very potentially trapped. And I was looking for something to do, some way to get out, and I, for a long time, felt this pull towards, it, this. I feel like this sounds super privileged to say, but I felt this pull towards trying to do something to help in Africa as a whole, right? I didn't know what that meant, I didn't know where it would end up, what I would end up doing, and and to be honest, I didn't even entirely want to do that. I just had this sensation, just had this feeling that I just really feel like I should do this. And then my parents, who were also looking to make a big change in their lives, they're also looking to get out of Pullman, the town that we grew up in, they were the ones that stumbled across Mercy Ships and thought they might actually have a good opportunity to volunteer with them and brought it up to me. And I was like, what are you gonna do on Mercy Ships? You're not medical. Like, I don't understand what you would do on a hospital ship if you're not medical. Cause I'd heard about Mercy Ships before. I knew kind of loosely what it was all about. And that was when my dad said, no, there's tons of other jobs. Like whether it's in counseling or whether it's photography or video, he was actually pretty excited and I was like, huh, this sounds interesting. So I figured I'm gonna go look into this too because I'm looking to do something international. West Africa, there's lots of French spoken, which would be great because I'm looking to use my French. And I'm, I was just dying for an adventure of some sort. So I went home immediately after talking to my dad about this. I was in the depths of like a really difficult time in my life. I, the beginning of what would become a series of very difficult times in my life. Maybe not the very beginning, but yeah, it was pretty rough. Right after the recession in Spokane, no opportunities for somebody creative like myself. Nothing to do. No, there was just, I was just dying. Go home. Look up Mercy Ships, look up the volunteering opportunities, and there were tons. And they actually needed a videographer at the time. So I was like, sweet, I could apply for that. Applied for that, waited for a while. The application process with Mercy Ships is notoriously brutal. I waited forever, finally heard back from them, and they said no. They didn't want me as a videographer, but they did want to interview me as an audiovisual technician, which I did have. I do have experience and did have experience running soundboards and putting sound systems together and stuff. But it's not something I really like to do, but I was really, really into the idea at this point and I was sold like I really wanted to go do this thing so I was like yes let's do it at the time I was also finally in for a job a really good job out at my alma mater I'd almost gotten a, a really good job with them before I was being groomed for a position by one of my old bosses one of my favorite bosses in the world that opportunity had been removed for me had been taken away by the recession so that wasn't gonna happen and so there was a new job that was coming up and so I remember having this huge crisis this moment where I was like, wait, do I get a job where I'm actually gonna get paid decently and hang out here and kind of see what happens from there? Or do I forget that and go have an adventure? And speaking of like confusing moments in dating, I remember this, this story so clearly. I had this date with this beautiful woman that I had a huge crush on. And I had a crush on her for a while, actually. The first time I ever talked to her, she was a 
huge jerk to me. And then he, like a year later, she moved away and then like a year later came back to town and I saw her and we kind of hit it off and then we were gonna go out. We're going on this date and I actually had to postpone because I had this like horrible like stomach problem. I ate this crappy food the night before. I we went to trivia night with one of my roommates, Daniel, who had been trying to get us to go out for a trivia night for a really long time. So that night I just had like, something broke down in my stomach, like it just like acid was building up all night long, heartburn, horrible. And in the morning, I just like puked blood all over the place. Uh, warning, it gets gross. Actually, that's as gross as it gets. Had to go to the emergency room and obviously, you know, needed to postpone the date. So I took a rain check. Went to my parents' place, they're still in Pullman. They were already selling their house. I went to try and help them do that, but I was just miserable, terrible shape. Ended up lying. I remember going down and lying in what was the guest room at that point, formerly my room, and just thinking to myself, okay, well, What's the decision maker here? Like basically the only thing that would be really outstanding would be to make a decent paycheck with this job at my alma mater. Alma mater meaning the university that I graduated from for those of you who aren't aware of that. Money or like everything else I want in life. Like it's a volunteer position with Mercy Ships so I'm gonna have to raise my own funds but I'll get to live on this crazy hospital ship. I'll get to see west coast of Africa. I'll get to go to different countries. I will get to meet people from all over the world. I'll get to use my French. I'll have this like adventure that I've kind of always wanted to have. Or on the other side, I'll have like a little bit more stability, but I'll be in a place where I'll never get to use my French. There's no support for my art. I, you know, it's just like, it was those things. It was like, it's really just about the money. And I was like, you know what? If it's just about the money, then it shouldn't matter. Like I, I need to do this other thing because that's, that's not worth it. Just doing something for the money isn't worth it. I didn't think, I mean, I'm not, I've never really had a lot of money, so I don't really know, but that was what I was thinking. So that's how I decided in the end to go do that. My parents had already decided to join Mercy Ships. They volunteered with Mercy Ships for a couple of years as well. So that's, they were selling their house. They're getting ready to move to Texas to do the training, to get ready to go. I went back to Spokane. I finally went on the date with this woman. We were both kind of like in the same boat, like, oh, we're just trying to figure ourselves out. And then we really hit it off. It got kind of confusing for a bit just because I really liked her a lot. And then she totally ghosted me like a month or two later, just hardcore ghosted me back before, I don't think ghosting was a term yet, just ripped my heart out. I mean, not, not really, no, no, but she didn't really rip my heart out. But, and I just, uh, we packed up, I helped my parents move down to Texas. And then I followed shortly after, I did some training down in Texas. We'll talk more about the training aspect of that later, but for me, it was really, really important that I, get the heck out of Dodge. And by Dodge, I mean Spokane. That's always an important thing, get out of Spokane. And the second thing was, I was looking, yeah, I was looking to use my French. I was looking to volunteer. I was looking to do something that would actually benefit other people with my life. I'd done other volunteer work before. I'd been involved in other ministries and in other efforts to try and, you know, make the world a better place. And I think in naive, I wasn't so naive to think that I'd be going and really making a difference. I knew that I wouldn't necessarily be making that much, as much of a difference as would be made in my life. But I definitely wanted to go be a part of something bigger than myself and be a part of something that was doing something good. And I really think Mercy Ships is doing something good. For those of you who are unaware of what Mercy Ships is, I've talked this whole time without actually telling you what Mercy Ships is. Mercy Ships operates the world's largest charity hospital ship, non-governmental organization. They're building another one. The world's first ever from the bottom to the top hospital ship is being built in China right now. So they're gonna have two ships, but the one that I lived on was uh, an old Danish rail ferry that had been refitted to be a hospital ship, has five operating theaters on it. it used to have six when I lived on it. They've uh, since moved that down to five and put that other one to good use doing something else. It depends on the field service. The surgeries kind of change a little bit, but they do some general surgery, maxillofacial surgery. They repair cleft lips and cleft palates. They do orthopedics, straightening kids' legs, helping them to walk fistula repair, they like uh, they do cataract surgeries, they run dental clinics. There's just a lot of really cool stuff that they do. And we'll talk more about that as we go. But it's just such a really, it's such a, such a cool organization and they do such cool work that it just sells itself. And I was really, really excited to be a part of it. And so when I found out more about it, I learned about it, I learned about what they were doing, about the opportunities uh, involved. I was super excited to go be a part of it. Now I'm excited to tell you guys more stories about it and share it with you as we go actually visit the ship in Douala, Cameroon in two months, not very far away. So I'm really looking forward to that. But yeah, thank you for putting up with me for my scattered first Mercy Ships Monday. I'm going to keep trying to tell you guys stories about Mercy Ships every Monday until we fly out of here and tell you about all the countries I've lived in, all the, just as much crazy stuff as I can fit in there. Today was just kind of a crazy day, moving Pushan and doing the live stream, and we got it all taken care of. So, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. We'll have another Mercy Ships Monday that is a little bit less scattered next week, and we'll dive more directly into it. I will see you again tomorrow morning, bright and early. I pretty much just want to go to bed at this point, and maybe, uh, soon. I gotta edit, but then, bed. <laughs>